Okay, I wasn't going to do a video tonight. <clears throat> I left the house at 9.30 this morning. I just got back 45 minutes ago. Um, I'm always doing something for someone else. Hardly ever get to do anything for myself. Always doing stuff for someone else. But something inspired me to go ahead and tell about this. A couple of y'all on my channel here, um, I mentioned this in some comments. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and put it out in the video uh, because it's kind of important and it kind of corroborates something I came up with yesterday. Uh, if you watched the video yesterday where I talked about in Jesus' time when Jesus died and the there was an earthquake and the graves broke open of the saints and they came out of the graves and went into the city. Um, and I talked about how we could see this happen again and it would be the graves breaking open for all the, those that are in Christ and uh, they would come out and that they would go, they would go up and then we who are alive would go up. And I said it would probably take, I think I mentioned it would probably take a great earthquake, probably the one the Re book of Revelations talks about where the whole earth shakes that not one person is, can, can stand. Last night, and I have, well, I've had a lot of really weird dreams before, but I've never had prophetic dreams ever. And... I haven't been able to have any dreams here the last probably four years because of a medication that I take. It suppresses dreams. <coughs> they give it to Vietnam veterans. Uh, my dreams were so violent that I would, I can, for example, in one dream, a guy pulled out a 38 and shot me in the mouth. I jumped out of bed, and for probably three or four hours after that, um, the front of my mouth hurt, and my teeth hurt where the bullet had hit and taken that part of my face off. Um, I've had other dreams very similar to that where I had physical pain from the dream and it was keeping me up all the time. I got to where I couldn't sleep because I was worried about having these dreams because I was so violent. I had a dream where a guy was messing with me, snuck up on me, and I turned around and I shoved him. I woke up shoving my wife uh, rather hard. Um, so I got worried. So they put me on this medication to suppress the dreams. I don't have dreams anymore. If I do, I don't remember them at all. Hardly. I might remember one little detail. This, I remember because I had two dreams. I had this. Then I had another dream after that. I don't remember anything of the other dream. There's a you know, residue there, but that's it. This, I remember perfectly well. And I was out in space, about out where the moon is. And I was looking back at the earth. And I could see like stars around it. I could see the Milky Way stretching out. And the earth is sitting there, and I heard a gong, a really loud gong. And the earth started to shake. And it was vibrating and shaking really bad. Um, and this, I mean, this was all-encompassing gong sound. Now, what struck me about this is I'd just done a video yesterday talking about that. And when people talk about the big earthquakes that we have, that we've been having, they said the earth rings like a bell when it happens. And... That goes with the dream that I had, too. What inspired me to go ahead and put this up, let me see if it'll work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if you take the hands, the little planets and moons, and the clouds out of this picture, so take those hands out, take those planets and the moon out, and take those clouds out. That's what I saw in my dream last night. I've never seen this picture before, ever. Paladin for Christ put it up on his channel as, a, as an announcement for somebody else that had had a message from the Lord. But that is almost identical to what I saw. With the stars and everything and the Milky Way in the background, almost completely, perfectly matches what I saw in my dream. So that was a little weird. And that threw me off. And I was like, well, I guess I better go ahead and put this out. Um... So I had been, I had been, I prayed a couple of times to have some dreams or some confirmations and stuff like that. I've been getting tons of confirmations, uh, but I hadn't had any dreams yet. And finally I was like, you know what, Lord, I really don't need a dream. I have faith in you. I believe. I see all these things. I don't need to have a dream to confirm it because I already know. I, I see it. I, I trust you. And he gave me one anyway. So this tells me that... Um, we're, we're very highly, high chance we're going to see uh, a 
big earthquake. Um, and then everything is going to unfold from there. Probably the rapture will happen right after that. I kind of thought that was going to happen anyway because of some of the stuff I read. <clears throat> so, yeah, finally had my first prophetic dream. That really threw me. Uh, and that sticks and that sound sticks in my head. Um, if, if, I, if there's a way I can rec find a, a sound bite that recreates it, I'll, I'll put it on one of the videos. While I have you guys here, and since I got inspired to give that testimony, I'm going to share a couple of scriptures with you guys. And the first one is going to be about, oops, there we go, is uh, I'm going to share a few scriptures about truth. A lot of people, I actually was going to make two different videos out of this, but I'm going to make, or three different videos, and I'm going to make one. A lot of people talk about their truth. Um, now that I found my truth, this is where what I do with my life. And they lie to themselves. They lie to themselves about what they are, who they are, where their life is going, what their purpose is, and they create this alternative to what the actual truth is. There's only one truth. You can't change it. It's the truth and period. That's it. You go and you make your own truth, then you find somebody else who's made their own truth, and y'all's truths don't jive. They don't, they don't parallel each other. And there, it, it creates constant conflict. Because what you think is true and what they think is true, totally different. And um, that's why we have to have one truth. We have to have universal truths. So that way we all come to an agreement on that. I'm going to show you some scripture about truth. Because today we're ignoring the truth. And the truth is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came, lived, was persecuted, died, and was resurrected to give us a chance at redemption and, and be in heaven. Um, it is only through him we receive salvation. He is the only access to heaven that we have and to stand in, in the presence of the Father. Um, it is your faith in him that gets you salvation, that you of you receiving that salvation. Nothing else, nothing else. If there's a single work involved in this, then he didn't have to die on the cross. We could have just worked our way into it. And that's not the case. The Bible says throughout, it is by faith. Faith alone is how you please God. Us believing in Jesus Christ and believing in who he was and what he did, and that's the truth. And that salvation is imputed onto us because of that. That pleases God because we believe. He went out of his way to do this for us. And now we have what we have. And the whole world is about to see the evidence of this, the ultimate evidence of this. And it is going to shock people. So let's get into a couple of scriptures about truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way. Ironic, this is the first one. This is the very first one. Come on, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Ain't gonna focus. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I just said that. Amen. John 8, 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He didn't say your truth. He didn't say my truth. He said the truth. John 16, 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. I am not the spirit or the spirit of truth, but I do the same thing. Whatever is given to me, I give to you guys. I don't water it down. I don't butter it up. I don't change it. I don't nothing. I give it to you exactly the way I'm giving it to you. That's why a lot of my videos are, are heart convicting and expose a lot of these issues that we're dealing with in the Christian uh, church um, and, and brings the lies out into the open so we can be honest with ourselves. I don't even want to know what that is. I find surprises sitting on tables all around my house. Uh, John 17, 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. How do we do that? I did a video about not being afraid to answer the call. And 
I have no idea what this is. It's still got something in it. Yeah. Surprises. Um, did the video about uh, answering the call, being honest with ourselves about who we are and what we are. We are sinners and we don't deserve anything. It is a gift that he gives us, a free gift. Being truthful about the word and what the word says. You have to believe the Bible in order for any of this to make sense and to work for you. People that don't believe the Bible is true, that even they think one error is in there, you see them out there coming up with their own description of the gospel or their own version of the gospel or rewriting the gospel. And what it ends up doing is it ends up self-glorifying. That's how you know it's not from God. Not. I just, I just suddenly got so fired up. I was really tired that I got fired up. John 4.24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Be honest with yourself. Do not lie to yourself. Because if you lie to yourself, you're going to try to lie to God. God knows everything. He sees everything. You can't hide anything from him. Ephesians 6.14, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. I did a video about the armor of God. That's two parts of the armor of God. Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. Is he talking about telling a lie to somebody to get out of something? No, that's not the lies he's talking about. He's talking about when you lie to God, when you lie to yourself about who you are, what you are, and what you have. People call themselves prophets, and they're lying to themselves and to everyone else, and they're not prophets. People that some there's some people out there that are that are not hardly any, and this is something that's surprising. Hardly anybody has has presented themselves as a watchman. You can take that title on and not be a watchman, and not do the things the watchmen are supposed to do. I did a video on this. I read it. There's it a big description in Ezekiel, and I have found a few people who have taken on the title or the mantle of watchmen, nothing on their channel and nothing they put out is what watchmen do. Um, what we do here, uh, me, all the, go in the description to see all the links that I have in there. These are watchmen. These are people that are showing things that are happening in the world. They're telling the truth, even if it hurts. They're getting the gospel out there. The, the true gospel of grace through faith, free gift of salvation, once saved, always saved. No, no works required and about the pre-tribulation rapture, that the rapture is pre-trib. A very, very small percentage of these people who have claimed to be watchmen are teaching something else. Almost all of us that are claiming to be watchmen are teaching the truth. There's just a few. Most of them, those people either don't put up videos at all, but yet they want to go in the comic section and, and complain and tell us everybody they're wrong, or they don't claim to be anything more than just somebody putting videos out. Uh, they won't take on that mantle of being a watchman. They know it's dangerous to do so. You cannot step into this type of situation being a teacher of the word because there's a greater condemnation that falls on us. I've taken this responsibility. I know exactly what I'm getting into by doing this. All the other ones who have done it, they know exactly what they're getting into. They've read the same scriptures I have. We know what we're doing. We know what we're getting involved in. And we know the dangers of doing this because if you preach something wrong, and cause someone to go astray. Excuse me. Excuse me. Then you are, you're going to suffer consequences because of that. I know full well this is going to happen. I'm, I worry about putting something out that's wrong. I want to do this right. I pray, Lord, make me do this the right way. I don't want to do this the wrong way. I don't want him mad at me. I don't want him upset with me. So those are the lies that they're talking about. There's some things that we do where it, people look at it and go, you lied to me. But it sometimes it's to spare somebody's feelings. Sometimes it's to, I've, I've lied to keep people from dying um, that are going to commit suicide. Uh, you know, fabricate something to tell somebody to make them feel like they're not alone. To get a gun out of their hand to get a bottle of pills out of their hand, to change the direction and the path that they're on and get them headed in a better direction. Uh, these are justified because it's saving someone's life. 
it's keeping a situation. I've lied to people to keep them from going somewhere because I knew what was going to happen when they went there and it was not going to be good. Did it to protect somebody, to help somebody, to save somebody. This isn't the types of lies that this is talking about. These lies are people, it's on a much grander scale. These lies are people who are making lies up about their faith, about their religion, about Christianity. People that are going out there saying they're 144,000. When they're not, they have not been chosen to be the 144,000. I promise you, at this point right now, if people are being told by an angel from God that they are 144,000, they are also being told not to say anything. It is but to keep them to themselves. And honestly, I've, what I've read in the scripture, they're not even on the earth. They're up in heaven. They're going to come down and they're going to go and evangelize. Whole other video. Psalm 145, 18, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. What is he saying? There are people, that, all kinds of people, we see them on YouTube all the time, that are called, that I called on the name of the Lord for this and that and the other. And then you go and you look deep into this person and what they believe in, and it's completely contrary to the word. That's not calling on the Lord in truth. Calling on the Lord in truth is knowing and understanding what is involved in our salvation. Knowing what he is, knowing who he is, and engaging him on that level. And knowing what we are, being honest with ourselves. I told you guys, video after video, it's in the heart. What's in your heart is what matters. That's what God's looking at. He's not looking at your outward appearances. He's not looking at the things on the outside that you're doing, or saying, or eating, or drinking, or any of, the, any of that kind of stuff. He's looking at what's in here. What's in your heart? Where's your heart at when you're doing these things? What's your driving force behind these things? That's what's important. So the trivial stuff, it's not what the scriptures are talking about. It's talking about big things, major things that actually make a big difference. Obviously, you don't want to lie to somebody on purpose uh, for something trivial or to, to benefit you. You don't want to tell somebody a lie because that's not very good integrity. However, I fully admit that I have done it. And in almost every case, it was to, back in my early years, it was to keep my behind out of trouble. But in a lot of cases, it was to keep somebody else from getting in trouble. It is what it is. Uh, 1 John three eighteen, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Truth is important. Psalm 119, 160, the sum of your world, wait, the sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Psalm 25, 5, lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for you I wait all the day long. John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. I'm going to stop it right there. I, I can't top that. I can't top that. That's beautiful and perfect. And the John 1, 14, and the Word became flesh, capital W, that's Jesus Christ. And the Word became flesh. And because back at the beginning of Genesis, and the Word was God and the Word was with God. Jesus was there at the very beginning. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Through him and what he did in his sacrifice, we become the sons of God. It's amazing. How this can't, how this doesn't cause somebody's heart to clench. Because the realization of who this is and the gravity of it. In our day and age, it's hard with all our modern conveniences and everything. It's hard to look at this stuff and, and look at the world and go, where's the comparison? Back then it was different. People were way more spiritual. Now it's, these are our gods. This TV, computers, freezers and refrigerators full of food, cars outside. These have become our gods. We, we are we're heavily involved in idol worship. But when you really sit down and think about what this is, think deeply in this story, get into the spirit. You, you start to go into the spirit automatically. 
when you're when you're really thinking about this and thinking about what Jesus went through. This isn't something trivial. This is big. And you start he starts to tell you secrets into your heart about these things. And it starts to affect you. You start because you start to come to realizations of I'm nothing. I'm nothing at all. Yet to God, I'm everything. And that's why he's making so much effort. Six thousand years worth of effort to save us to save us from ourselves to save us from each other and to save us from hell that should affect you that should strike a chord that should make you sit up and go god actually is looking at me he does know who i am and he's paying attention to what i'm doing and making an effort to reach out to me. If that doesn't cause you to pause, if that doesn't cause you to stop and think about what you're doing and what what is this life? What is the the what is the what's the word I'm looking for? The summation of this life. What does it lead to? If it's just this life, it's nothing. I've lived and died for nothing. If it's for Christ, I've lived and died for everything, for eternity, to be there with him. It makes my pain of no consequence. It makes my sickness of no consequence. It makes my sufferings of... I went over to my mom's house today, threw, I don't know, about 25 bales of hay off of a trailer for her, and then moved a few things around to get them set up for her. I sweat so bad that I soaked the t-shirt I was in and uh, the, the pants I was wearing halfway through. And I had to start to go run errands and do other things. I had to stop at a store, stopped at a gas station out there in the middle of nowhere. It's got gr great food in there. Stopped and bought a t-shirt just so I'd have a dry t-shirt to wear because I soaked through them so bad because everything that I do is monumentally hard and it's so much effort and takes so much of a toll on my body that um, anything I do outside, even inside, I start to sweat profusely. I never used to be that way. It's because of this connective tissue disease that I have. It's of no consequence to me. I stopped, I bought a t-shirt, I walked on, did what I had to do. Because in Christ, these things don't mean anything. It's what's waiting up there that means something. That's what's important is to be with him. And for the treasures you're laying up in heaven, by the good things that you do for others, by giving of yourself, by taking the time to think about God, acknowledging him and thanking him and honoring him and glorifying him. And when the opportunity arises, taking it to preach the gospel to somebody, to tell somebody about Jesus Christ, even if it's a few words and you plant that seed. It doesn't seem like it, but this is an honor to do this. To me, because this has been my desire for so long, this is an honor to be a watchman and to tell about the scripture and at night make intercessory prayer and during the day when I'm driving, making prayer and doing for others. And I don't always get a return. In fact, most of the time I don't get any return on this. In fact, uh, most of the time when I do something for others, I'll get a thank you sometimes. But a lot of times I get, well, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or, hey, uh, did you manage to get your hands on this and do this part? Um, when do you think you're going to have this done? That's what I get. I don't get gratitude very much. I don't get any kind of return at all. I don't get, you know, people just want more because I'm a good person and I do for others. And I'm there. I make myself available, especially now that I've been medically retired. I'm always putting myself out there. And what I found is other people don't step up to do for me what I do for them. Because I, there's a lot of times I could use help here to get things done because my physical ability isn't the way it used to be. I don't get that in return. What I get is, hey, what else can you do for me? And you know what? I used to get very mad about that, especially after the army. But now I've realized it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep doing it because I love to do it for other people. I love to help other people. I love to take the abilities that I have and that, that he's trained me with.
being able to, I can fix anything. Um, you name it, I can, you name it, I can pretty much do it. Or I know a, at least a little bit of something about it. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. And I use those skills to go and benefit other people and to help other people. And all these things that I've learned over the years, that the Lord has taught me or allowed me to learn. I use it to benefit others. And I've, I can't even begin to tell you the money that I've saved people from having to go somewhere to have somebody do something for them. When I went over there and I just did it. Now, a lot of people show their appreciation over the years, but more haven't. And they don't return. They don't reciprocate. Um, because anytime anybody's ever done anything for me, I reciprocate by helping them with something. Uh, most of my friends, we've had that trade-off. Um, you don't see that very often, especially nowadays. And you know who's the worst for that? Christians. It's staggering that Christians who know what we're supposed to do and know what the Lord expects of us are the worst for these things. Rather than the, just the regular person walking around out there. Now, of course, times have changed a little bit. Things are a little different than what they used to be. Um, the love of many has grown cold. Uh, the world is coming. Our age is coming to an end. The, the world as we know it is coming to an end. So we have a little bit of a, of a special situation going on here. But throughout my life, it's been that way. And I've always just loved doing for other people. At some point, I, I walk away from people because they abuse the situation so badly that I can't get involved in it anymore. But here I'm rambling on and on and on. The fact is, of all this, everything that I've done on this channel, uh, everything I've put out, everything I've shared, everything I do in my life, we see the culmination of that coming together right now. All that stuff. I, I, I can't even begin to tell you what it's going to be like at the BMC for myself or for anyone else. But what I hope is that the things that I did do in my life were good. And were genuinely good and a benefit uh, and glorify God. Um, if not, then they'll get burned up. But you know what? I'm at the point now where I, I, it doesn't bother me. None of that matters to me. When the rapture happens, it doesn't even matter to me anymore. I mean, I see some things that point me in very specific directions. And I've shared that on, the, on these videos. But I'm okay with it. I'm at peace with it. I'm at peace with where, where we're at and what's going on. I take, I'm taking the time to laugh to enjoy good food, to enjoy good company, to take the moment to smell the flowers, literally, to pay attention to things I haven't paid attention to in a long time. Our time is very short here. In Christ, everything looks different. Everything is different. If you're not with Jesus Christ, the ABCs of salvation, admit you're a sinner, uh, hold on. Let me see if I can remember them. I can't remember them. Oh, I got to go read them. I remember them now. But the you can find them on other guys' channels. I'll get them and put them on mine. Uh, the ABCs of salvation. That's what you need to go by. Um, admit you're a sinner. Believe in Jesus Christ. And confess your sins. It's so simple. And there's no reason why you shouldn't step forward and do this. There's no excuse you can make why you haven't received salvation in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you guys of a certainty here very, very quickly. And I, what I mean by very quickly is don't make plans for summer. Very quickly, things are about to change in this world. And those people, all of you who haven't received him, you're just watching videos and you're looking. You're certain, if you're here watching videos and you haven't received Jesus Christ, you're looking. If you haven't, now is the time. If you don't now, you definitely will after. Because what you're going to endure at the beginning of the tribulation is horrible. The culmination of all the evil and bad that has happened in your life will happen all at once in that first three and a half years. Times ten, it's going to be bad. You don't want to be here for that. Get salvation through Jesus Christ. Believe on the Son of God. And get saved. It's so simple. It's so easy. And you literally don't have to change. He will change you. The Holy Spirit indwelling in you will change you. You don't have to do it. 
let God do a work in you and see the incredible things that he has planned and waiting for all of us. I love each and every one of you watching these videos. I love everyone out there that's not watching these videos on all the other channels. And I bless each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, I do know his name. And our Holy Father in heaven, And I can't wait to meet you guys in the sky. Some of you, I feel like we, in spirit, we already know each other. Because we've talked so much. Pretty soon we're all going to be face to face. The same Lord in the same glorified body and the same love that is waiting up there in heaven for us. You guys are going to be completely blown away by how what it is like up there. Completely. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. I will put videos up tomorrow morning uh, because I have some time. I'll be able to do it tomorrow instead of running out the door. Have a good evening. I'll see you guys tomorrow.